Our Sharia, our religion has not left a matter except it has explained it to us. Whether that matter is going to bring us good, it told us about it. And if that matter is going to bring us harm and problems, it warned us against it. Walidarika, the scholars, they said that the religion is salihatul li kulli zamanin wa makan. This religion, it's befitting for every time and every place. And because we have become distanced from the Quran and the Sunnah, sometimes we think that the Quran doesn't have a response to this issue. It doesn't maybe have an answer for this issue. Or the Sunnah doesn't have an answer for this issue. But the true reality is our religion does. So we just finished the, um, the Jum'ah prayer. I'm waiting for Zaid right now here, just chilling in the sun. And there is this one benefit I wanted to share from the book. And it's always, every single time I read the story of the, of the Sahabas, it, it just astonishes me. And of course, some of the books that you guys can uh, look at, of course, is the Seerah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But hey, look at, uh, I'm going on the Tafsir of Surah Al-Hashr. This is Tafsir al -Sahi. Sorry, there's a lot of wind. I don't know if you can hear me. But uh, Wallahi, if you look at the Ansar and the love that they had for the Muhajirun, it just shows you they always, always give them preference over themselves. And this is one of the qualities of a, of a believer. They never care about the wealth and they never care about anything that is worldly material. And if anything, they will always put the rest of the people over themselves. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to learn from this and to actually make us from them. I mean. <laughs> من كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك في عباده ربه حدا. So tired, you know my eyes. I barely slept last time. So. I slept for six a.m. I don't know what happened. Like I wasn't tired. We are going to our friend's house for iftar and Zaid is super, 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 super sick. We were actually meant to um, make a couple of videos and do a few things, but we just went to the masjid and we just chilled there and this brother is basically half asleep. So today's reminder is going to be about being sick. So Zaid, actually hold the camera. Bro, oh, I'm sick. I don't want to hold the camera. What do you want me to say? Uh, give a reminder about being sick. وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِي And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who heals you when you're sick. Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, مَا أصاب Why is my hand in the corner? مَا أصاب المسلم أو مَا أصاب المسلم من وصب ولا نصب ولا هم ولا حزن ولا أذى حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كفر الله به عنه حتى الشوكة so inshallah this is an expiation for my sins because I'm sinful and uh, I've done some bad things so Allah is forgiving me inshallah. inshallah but the whole point of a sickness is that it's a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh human you're weak you're not in control you can't even control your own heartbeat put your hand on your heart try and stop it you can't stop your own heartbeat so what makes you think that you're in control Allah always sends these reminders yeah, insan, you're a small little miskeen and I'm the one in charge, so have some tawadu, have some humility and have show mercy to the people, inshallah. I think it's upside down, bro. Anyway. It is upside down, but wait, 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 you have to give a reminder about today's the final hour of uh, Friday this the right and uh, one of the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. Remember, try to, of course, um, give as much salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as much as possible. But one of the hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said كَلِمَتَانِ خَفِفَتَانِ عَلَى اللِّسَانِ ثَقِلَتَانِ فِي الْمِيزَانِ خَلِبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ سُبْحَانُ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِ سُبْحَانُ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ so There are two statements which are very heavy on the skills but they are very light on the tongue. It's very easy for you to say these statements. And they are سُبْحَانُ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانُ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ And um, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said مَنْ صَلَّ عَلَيَّ وَاحِدَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ عَشْرَ If you send a salawat to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Of course especially on Fridays يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Ayyum Look at the lion bro إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ 
Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima And uh, yeah that's my reminder It's a nice little sun on us Wa shamsi wa duhaha As you can see Allah Azza wa Jal All of this Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi Wa akhtilaf al layli wal nahari la ayatin li ulil albaab الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحان فقنا عذاب النار The people who understand, the people who use their intellect, they know that Allah Azza wa Jal, He didn't create all of this for no reason. So turn back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And also, Are we done? My, my, uh, arm is, my arm is really hurting. Yeah, his arm is hurting. Uh, Zaid Fanu, remember today is the final hour of Friday. And what does the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? I, I don't know. Inna fil jum'ati, inna fil jum'ati, inna fil jum'ati, Anyway, the hadith will be here, inshallah. Inshallah, so right, try to the make as much dua. I can't lie, guys. Um, we don't know where we're going. We've just, oh, subhanallah, this brother has turned the camera around 50 times. So we don't know where we're going. We're just walking around. I can't lie. So. Alhamdulillah. Um, <laughs> 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 What do you mean? Look at this cute thing. Is this a... Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. Bro, this is actually awesome. Nah, nah, nah. It doesn't feel right to do it. Let's just eat our own one. Wait, what? I thought you were going to feed each other, bro. What's going on? Nah, nah. He's shy, man. No, no, no. I don't want to be the first. Nah, 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 nah. You, you go. You have to go, bro. Who's in the toilet? Oh, two people in the toilet. Before I did the collab with Zaid, Romel told me to collab with Zaid. Oh jeez, he knows. Oh jeez. I lost. I lost. Then it was still getting those I lost, but I'm ready. Hello, I'm ready. Both medics. Mashallah. No. You're going to say something? I thought you were going to start. That's why you pointed it towards you. Nothing. No, no. I'm just here for in to, for refutation in the case you guys get. <laughs> He's there to supervise us. This is us. He, we're his youngest. <laughs> Whoa, He's been like again. Yeah. Ah, huh? is this fun? So here's the thing that I'm thinking about, right? If someone comes to me and they say to me, "Okay, brother, I'm fasting," you know, like food, drink, my wife, like everything that I. You know everything that I enjoy outside of Ramadan. I'm now staying away from it. But the the prayer, I find it very difficult. Like mm -hmm. I know so many people who fast, mm -hmm. but bro, they don't pray five times a day. Really? Or they might pray the Fajr, or they and they might pray the Maghrib because that's the time you open and close the fast. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, they won't pray. Wait, no, you need to be specific. Do they pray two prayers? They'll pray those two prayers. Okay. But outside of that, they won't pray, and that's in the month of Ramadan. Or they are inconsistent or in the prayers. They're just know? inconsistent. Mm -hmm. They'll be like. Maybe they might pray three prayers, they might pray four prayers, mm. or they might even pray one. But mm. during every day, it's not like I pray five times a day. Mm, mm, mm. Do you get what First I'm trying to say? There is literally a difference of opinion between scholars on whether leaving the prayer makes you a kafir. And we're not talking about whether it's leaving the prayer because you don't believe you should pray. No, it's not that. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Of course we know that. But we're talking about a person that doesn't pray out of laziness. And of course scholars, they have, this is a masail ikhtilafiyah uh, and uh, there are some videos I'm going to put down in the description below for you guys to watch. Uh, but, uh, um, for example, some of the, the strongest opinion that my teacher follows is uh, that anyone who doesn't pray out of, um, for example, laziness, they are a kafir. And there is a lot of evidence for this. 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا الحديث العهد الذي بيننا وبينهم الصلاة فمن تركها فقد كفر The covenant between us and a kafir i.e. us Muslims and a kafir is the prayer so whoever has left off the prayer has committed kufr very clear hadith there's another hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says بين الرجل وبين الشرك والكفر ترك الصلاة that between a man and shirk and kufr is leaving off the prayer so if you leave off the prayer then you have committed kufr there's actually another hadith Um, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says من حافظ على هذه الصلوات كنا لهن نورا وبرهانا ونجاة يوم القيامة ومن لم يحافظ عليها لم تكن له نورا ونجاة وبرهانا يوم القيامة وحشير مع فرعون وهمان وأبي بن خلف But whoever uh, prays five times a day Uh, these prayers, these five prayers will be a nur, a light for them on the day of judgment on this day when there is no light on this day when there is no light there will be no light, it will be pitch black Amma those who pray, for they will have a nur to be able to walk uh, walk with nuran wa um, kunna, burhanan it will be a proof, a burhan mm -hmm. is a clear proof that a clear proof of what? a testimony of your faith If you want to prove that you're a Muslim, you have to pray five times a day. Inshallah. The Messenger <laughs> the first thing you will be asked on Yawm Al-Qiyamah is your prayer. Mm -hmm. And if your prayer is just and is right and you have uh, safeguarded your prayer, uh, um, then Allah Azza wa Jal will, inshallah, Ev everything else after that will, will fall in place like a domino effect. You, if you, you see a domino, you push one, the rest follow. It is exactly like that, the prayer. If the prayer is good, then your zakah will be good. Inshallah, your mannerisms, your character will be good. Your sadaqah will be, you will be generous. And inshallah, Allah will say, Tafaddal into Jannah in Al-Firdaus bi'idni Allah sami'i al-kareem. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Naam. That the prayer, it prevents one and takes one away from evil uh, and falsehood. And that means that if you are finding yourself committing major sins, or if you see someone who is misguided, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows who is misguided and who isn't, But if you see someone who is struggling with their iman or struggling to do a lot of good deeds or struggling to stay away from a major sin, just know that there is a problem in their prayer. Because the prayer is a reflection of your outside life. And your outside life is a reflection of your prayer. So if you fix the prayer, Allah will fix your life. If you fix the prayer, Allah will fix your life. So to this person who is fasting, but they are not praying, my brother or sister, you need to pray first. It is like you're trying to build a house Okay, you have moved on to installing the windows. Okay, let's just say that that's the fasting. Mm. Or you've installed the fridge and you put all the food in it. Yeah. But you've not put the groundwork in. You've not even checked the ground to make sure that it's, it is stable to build that house in. The house, yeah. So you have to pray five times a day to call yourself Muslim. And then you add on the good deeds. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a very, very, very beautiful and powerful hadith. Um, uh, من عاد لي وليا فقد أذنته بالحرب. Mm -hmm. That whoever... Anyway, the hadith is here. من عاد لي وليا فقد أذنته بالحرب. It's a long hadith. وما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضته عليه. That my slave doesn't come closer to me, doesn't more become more beloved to me. Allah says, and what I have commanded them to do, the yeah. obligatory actions. The obligatory actions are very simple. Yeah. الشهاده. You pray five times a day. You fast your month of Ramadan. Uh, sorry, you pay your zakah. You fast your month of Ramadan and you go to Hajj if you are able to do so. No. You have a strong enough body, mind, and you have enough money. And then the hadith continues to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا زَالَ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ That my slave will continue to come closer to me with the, what? Sunnah acts, the nafil yeah. acts, until I love them. فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّذِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّذِي لَتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا Subhanallah. That, and then Allah says that this slave of mine, because of their intense desire and love for me, they will continue and continue to come closer to me, trying to find any good deed that they can do. Anything. They try to see a good deed. They're always rushing to do that good deed before everyone else until Allah says, they become, I become the eyes that they see with. They will only look at the halal. I become the ears that they hear with. They will only listen to that which is halal, I become the hand that they strike with. The hands that they have will only go and no. pick up the halal, will only, only the halal. use for the halal and the feet that they walk with. They will only walk to places of halal. They will walk to the masajid at the night time as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith by, um, he says in a hadith, he says, um, uh, alayhi salatu wassalam, 
Which one is it? Oh, there's many, but there's one of them that says, yeah. for example, uh, uh, Subhanallah. In the in the end, in the end, way is yeah. is that in terms of like all of this reward that we're doing, like if you're fasting, you're doing it for the reward of Allah, right? Mm. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Hal jazaa'ul ihsani illa al ihsan." Is there any reward for good, mm. but good? So every time we're doing these good deeds, so if we're doing fasting, for example, mm. we're going to get good. Whereas Allah SWT says in the Quran as well, mm. that He rewards for fasting, but He never puts how much reward. In the Psalm, Exactly, there is. For me. Yeah, there's no limit for the fasting. Yeah, so it could be, uh, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, right, I'm fasting, I'm doing this, I'm doing it for Allah. Mm. But if you're not doing the prayer, you can't choose an obligation. You can't choose one. Ob I'm going to do this, no. or I'm not going to do this. Yeah. That if Allah and His Messenger they give you something, they tell you to do something, <coughs> a believing man or a believing woman, you do not have the choice. The choice. Yeah. I took bi ba'd al kitab wa takfurun bi ba'd. Do you believe in parts of the book and you disbelieve in other parts? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chastises Bani Israel in the Quran. No. You're going to pick and choose which part of the religion you follow? No. Enter Islam completely. Mm -hmm. Submit to your Lord. Khalas, let go of your desires. Just submit to Allah. Mm -hmm. What he has commanded you to do, it is for your benefit. No. And what he has asked us to stay away from, it is for our benefit. And Allah has asked us to stay away from really only a few things and everything else is halal. Yeah. It is for our benefit even if we do not realize it. Yeah. Exactly. Allah knows and He is the best. You may hate something, but it's good for you. Yeah. You may really love something, but it turns out to be bad for you. And Allah knows, but you don't know. You do not know. So you have to trust your Lord. Yeah. Just like a child has to trust their parent when their parent Talk tells them, don't do this. Hmm? Don't hang around with this person because they could be bad for you. Just trust me. I've been through life. I know more than you. The same thing with your Lord. And to Allah belongs the best of examples. If I saw my brother not fasting, not my specific brother, but if I saw a brother not fasting, I'd be like, brother, what's going on? That on that day, that on that day close friends, there will be enemies to one another, except those who were what? Those who used to fear Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah only accepts from the people who are pious, who are God fearing, who fear Allah. So, any other questions? By the way, this started as a question. Any other questions? Uh, so, the best way to approach someone who we find that is not praying the salah, yeah, but he's just doing, yeah. but he's just doing the fasting. Like not just a he, maybe it's a sister, so maybe it's a she. The best way to uh, the best way to approach that person is to say, look, like you can't don't say to them, oh. What's the point of fasting? Because yeah. you're not praying. If you say it from that and they stop fasting, then you took them away from that as well. Mm. You know what I mean? So maybe the way to go and talk to them is you see how Abu Turab and Zaid says so many things about how beautiful the prayer is, how amazing the prayer is, how much it's an obligation, how much Allah SWT loves it, how much Allah SWT brings the obligation above anything else. The obligation, it all comes first. Basically, focus on the obligatory acts, make sure they're patterned down, and then focus on increasing in the sunnah acts and then once you have finished all the sunnah acts that you can think of as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu did huh? then you focus on your ikhlas your sincerity in the act of worship how attached is your heart to the act of worship as the how much khushu you have in your prayer as the tabi'in would say that Abu Bakr he never was it's not that he did more good deeds than us yeah it is because something fell in his heart it wasn't a hadith, it's just it's, it's a, quote, a quote of the scholars. Mm -hmm. Something fell in the heart of Abu Bakr that just made him different. He had something in his heart that really connected him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Bakr. If I had to choose a close friend from this ummah, it would have been Abu Bakr. And no one, mm -hmm. no one has ever uh, there's so many ahadith, I don't want to go into the long no. story of Umar and, yeah, and yeah. Abu Bakr But Abu Bakr the Messenger وسلم, said no one, no one benefited him the way Abu Bakr mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. from that day, even the Salaf al they would always say it's the, the Sahabis used to say they used to always be uh, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. We used to go to Abu Bakr first and then Umar and then Uthman. Allah says in hadith, may Allah curse the one who insults my companions. No. Ayatul Imani Khubul Ansar. 
وآيتُ النفاق بغض الأنصار also and also وسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين تبعون بإحسان ورضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن الله is pleased with them how can you be displeased with them Allah is pleased with them anyway it's getting late guys yeah let's go guys just some quick practical points this is always the most important bit essentially if you do find a brother or sister who's not praying but they're fasting be gentle with them advise them softly and kindly as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Musa alayhi salam in the Quran in Surah Taha to go to Fir'aun uh, speak to him in a very gentle way we've done a video down below on Ramadan Muslims no. please check the description and it is basically this whole topic of you know how to approach Muslims who might be struggling or just practicing in Ramadan um, speak to them gently advise them on the importance of the prayer no. if you yourself don't know the importance of the prayer then how can you advise them which means that you have to learn you have to go study why the prayer is important learn some ahadith and then talk to them gently and then encourage them to come pray with you encourage them to what come pray with you in jama'ah and then as long as they start a habit that's okay if they're not praying one prayer try and get them to start doing one if they're already doing one two and then three and then four until five and then alhamdulillah mm-hmm. once they do five prayers a day khalas yeah allah will guide them oh allah guide me to the straight path leave the rest to your lord yeah. Now we can say anything which you've said that is wrong or incorrect is from us in the shaitan. And Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubilai. Let's go home. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.